welcome to our Legira podcast series, In Conversation. My name is Benson Tibiti, Director of Communications at Power for All. In this episode, our focus is on South-South cooperation as a mechanism to scale implementation of the 2030 Agenda. We are honored to be joined by Mr. Upendra Tripadi, the Director General of the International Solar Alliance, also known as the ISA or ISA. Mr. Tripadi is also the former Secretary of India's Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. The International Solar Alliance was launched at the UN United Nations Climate Change Conference in Paris nearly four years ago. ISA's mission is to provide a dedicated platform for cooperation among solar resource-rich countries and the wider global community that seeks to increase the use of solar. Welcome, Director General, and tell us a little bit about ISA. Well, uh, as you have correctly uh, stated, the International Solar Alliance uh, was launched at uh, COP21 in Paris. And uh, when it was launched, it was limited to the tropical countries within the tropics. So we had a target uh, stakeholder audience of 121 countries. But uh, uh, of late, uh, the assembly last year, the first assembly has amended uh, the treaty, the framework agreement. And today, any UN member can be a member of AISHA once, of course, the amendment comes into force. And for getting into force, we need uh, another 19 countries to accept the amendment. Uh, uh, 11 have done so far. Uh, in aggregate, we need uh, 30 countries. Then countries like Germany, uh, Italy, Spain, uh, even Mongolia, and all other countries which are outside the tropics, and which are UN members, can become member countries. So in a sense, uh, you know, ISA is no more a South-South uh, institution. Although initially it was, you know, its main focus was uh, South South, but uh, today even after the amendment, we have uh, we we promote South South, uh, uh, you know, uh, transfer of technology. We do promote South South cooperation. In fact, recently we have sent a proposal to the South South Secretariat in New York uh, for a financial partnership so that we can promote uh, projects in member countries. As you know, one of our main focus is uh, to roll out uh, self-help projects in member countries so that uh, financing agencies find it attractive to have bankable projects. And uh, that is one of the models. So today, uh, in fact, we have uh, uh, very advanced countries uh, as members. We have also six countries as our members. We have LDCs as our members. So, uh, in a sense, 79 countries who have signed the ISA framework uh, agreement represent a variety of uh, countries who are in need of uh, different, uh, you know, out of the uh, state of the art technologies. Uh, and ISA is a common platform where they can interact, uh, where they can uh, network, and where they can move forward. Okay, thank you so much. And actually, this is in line with our topic of today. How can South-South cooperation be scaled up in support of the implementation of the 2030 Agenda? So my first question to you is, what are the comparative advantages and opportunities for countries in the Global South to work with International Solar Alliance compared to other modalities of cooperation? Well, uh, you know, we have uh, a few unique things with uh, International Solar Alliance. Uh, number one, you know, it is a very specialized uh, agency. You know, it only talks about solar. Uh, of course, sometimes we do also talk about solar derivatives like wind and, and you know, NFRA. And in a sense, from the macro perspective, whether you know, we can, you know, hybridize uh, wind, solar, uh, or solar heat and solar light. But uh, uh, if you look at uh, not only the specialization in solar, that is one thing. Number two is we are totally member-driven we are totally action oriented. So whatever we do, we talk about projects and we have a target given in the framework agreement itself, unlike any other organization, we have a target of mobilizing at least a thousand billion dollars by 2030. Now to mobilize this type of, you know, we are not only member driven, we are also target driven, we are also action driven. And uh, our whole strategic framework of uh, programs, projects, activities, are, uh, you know, oriented towards generating more and more projects in the field. For example, uh, you know, take our first example of uh, the program, the, you know, the, the scaling up agricultural uh, applications. We have targeted the farmers in the members' countries. So we requested them if they could tell us how many farmers they would like to help. Some 22 countries came forward and gave a demand which was around 272,000 solar pumps. 
we have aggregated this demand. We have gone for a global tender. And uh, this month end is a time when the, you know, the tenders will be opened. And we are sure this aggregation will lead to a reduction in the price of solar pumps. Uh, and uh, that way we can actually reach out to the farming communities in the member countries. Similarly, we have finance programs where we aggregate financial demands and find out how the cost of capital can be brought down. Mini grids, rooftop, storage, and e-solar mobility. One of the main focus is to find out projects so that we can aggregate demands uh, within and among the uh, member countries. Uh, that is one of the strategies. And uh, if you look at any other organization today, uh, no one actually, you know, uh, I, I mean, they are our senior partners, so we do depend a lot the knowledge they generate. Uh, that they, they do a wonderful job in that. Uh, and we actually, uh, at that sense, we are the implementation wing of the whole global organizations now. We are focusing uh, on projects, uh, in a sense, we are for the projects, of the projects, and by the projects. Okay, thank you so much. And that is out of the out of out of India as a country, right? Yeah, uh, we have a you know India is the headquarters country. We have got a headquarters agreement with India. Uh, we are located there, and uh, India has been the main financier. They have put sixteen million dollars of corpus fund. They also give us a grant of two point five million dollars per year for the first five years. They will also build the office. So uh, you know, for ISA and that apart, the Indian companies have put in around $9 million as purpose fund, uh, apart from, you know, uh, one company from China and one company from Japan. So our finance comes from the purpose that we have built up from the contributions of these companies and uh, India. Uh, we do have some help financial from World Bank, from ADB, and some in-kind help from Australia and France. Uh, and European Union. Uh, but, uh, you know, the more important thing is that the governance structure of ISA has become pretty sound now. We have France as co-president. Uh, we have three vice presidents. Africa is represented by Togo and Asia Pacific by Tonga, as well as we have Peru, who is the vice president for Latin America. And that ensures that, you know, from various regions, we have representation in the governance structure. Uh, we have a finance committee uh, represented, you know, chaired by Fiji, a program committee chaired by Comoros, and uh, our uh, general legal committee is headed by Australia. So you can see that we have got a very fine governance structure in place, and uh, we do need uh, to build up our office. So we are thinking of recruiting at least 20 global staff uh, uh, using the same professional standards of UN. Uh, we, we also want to bring some latest software, uh, the ERP systems, uh, and our uh, external audit by Deloitte is, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, it's on course. Uh, we will have, uh, uh, so essence, essentially we are trying to have a state-of-the-art office for this small period. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. So in terms of successes and uh, or, or failures, uh, what is the best example of a success and the best example of failure that ISA has experienced to date? Oh, that's a very good one. In fact, I was asking my officers, you know, what are the examples? And most say that uh, our success has been uh, uh, two things. One, we have got a very good governance structure in place. It's an inclusive organization, you know. Uh, we have contributions, we have uh, involvement, uh, and sort of, you know, inclusive governance, as I highlighted, you know, with our president, co-president, vice presidents, and chairs of the various committees. We have also four regional committees, uh, you know, the Asian, Asia Pacific, the African region, the Latin American, and the European others. That has been a success. How, in such a short term, short period, we have been able to coalesce a governance structure. Uh, the failure, or rather, uh, I mean, we are too young to fail also because we have started so many things we haven't failed. Okay. Uh, but uh, we have limitations. We are on a learning curve because initially we thought, you know, the skill, the speed, and the, uh, the, 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 you know, the skill. So, scale, skill, and speed, all these three things were very easy. Yeah. But not so. You know, when you go from, uh, you know, country to sub-country, sub-region, things, uh, you find that things do take time. You know, particularly, we have 40 partners, like major financing partners, we have corporate partners. So, 
to put an excel framework uh, it takes uh, time uh, and uh, that is a limitation and when you grow bigger you find that uh, you have to put in a lot more efforts to bring everybody together and uh, but that is also a, a, a good thing because when you do things together that product becomes very strong okay. and so we believe that this modern club will help us Okay, great. So, uh, besides aspiring investments, how much is capacity building as part of ISA's work? See, capacity building, uh, if you look at our Article 2, it talks about, you know, uh, financial resources, it talks about uh, resource mobilization, it talks about R&D, uh, it talks about capacity building and innovation. But uh, in the front of capacity building, we've uh, been doing pretty well. For example, one, uh, with the help of the government of India, some 200 engineers we got from various member countries and trained them in India as master trainers. Uh, they go back home and they start training themselves and others. Uh, and back home, we also st uh, start something called Solar Technology Application and Resource Center, Star Centers. Some 67 star centers we have started. And uh, number three, you know, we have got uh, mid-carrier officers from member countries, 21 of them, and in a premier institute in India called Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, they're all doing a M-Tech course starting from 22nd of July this year. And uh, number four, we are also bringing in 35 policymakers for a one-year MBA course in energy management. The idea is that for each member country, we will put three experts, you know, trained like this, who can go back and form a core policy group in the member countries who would actually be serving the national task force and the focal point that we have put in each country. In each member country, we have a national focal point who coordinates with us and a national task force headed by the energy minister to roll out solar projects and to have, you know, something called solar roadmap for those countries. And uh, in that sense, you will find that capacity building has been very crucial to our dream of a thousand billion dollars of projects. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so lastly, uh, of course, you know, like I mentioned in my initial introduction, I said last week we at the UN uh, Day for South South Cooperation. And of course, uh, one of the key things that came out from these deliberations is that South South Cooperation and North, or rather North South Cooperation is meant to contribute to the achievement of the Agenda 2030. Uh, what evidence exists around the importance of ISA uh, on the you know, achievement of the Agenda 2030? specifically on SDG number seven? Well, uh, you know, uh, in fact, if you think of the headquarters uh, country, India, India has given connectivity to some 38 million consumers in the last uh, 28 months. Uh, I'm told this is uh, one of the biggest uh, in mankind's history, you know, giving energy access to 38 million uh, people in such a short span of time. But not only India, if you look at the number of projects that have come from financing by France, who put $2 billion in soft loan, and India who put, uh, uh, France put 1.5 billion euros, and uh, India put $2 billion. We have requested now countries like Japan, Netherlands, uh, UK, Australia to follow suit. And uh, we presume, you know, this type of platform will bring in a sort of uh, focus on energy access. And not only energy access, if you look at our program on, uh, for farmers, you know, by improving the income generation by farmers, by reducing the carbon footprint of uh, uh, irrigation, uh, all across, not only SDG 7, but we are impacting other SDGs as well. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Upendra Tripathi. Uh, we appreciate your time and thank you for joining us. Uh, Mr. Tripathi is the, current, is the current Director General of International Solar Alliance. We appreciate you so much for your time and thank you again uh, for your time and uh, for joining us. Uh, International Solar Alliance uh, website is www.isolaralliance.org. Thank you again. Thank you.